is on our Zoom. So we're going to be making this, okay? So let me show you the whole thing. Basically, it's someone that's putting a boat into the world, which means that their choice matters uh, wherever they go, whether it be in the United States, whether it be whether they be in a different country, wherever they are, your vote matters, your choice matters, you have a right to do it. Um, if someone has taken that right away from you, then that kind of sucks, right? Because it doesn't feel good whenever you can't make choices, whenever you can't choose from what you want or what you don't want. So it's really good that we have choices and we have this right throughout. We're going to draw this. We're going to draw a little ballot right over here. This is like a piece of paper with someone's vote in it. And then they're putting it into the world. And then we're going to draw some extra, extra cool, like, uh, confetti and also fireworks types of things. Okay. I also want to point out that all of these colors have a sense of symbolism. Um, so the reason why we have earth and we know that this is the world, but here, this firework is red and blue, which stands for United States because, of course, we are in the United States. However, if there's anyone that's from not from the United States, you can definitely color it your flag's color. Um, but I did it for United States because uh, that is currently where I reside, and that's the symbolism I wanted to portray. And right here, again, the skin color because, again, for us, it really does matter, like, wh who we want us to represent and how much can we... Um, represent in the world too. Voting and obviously. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. And if you have any questions, you can always put it in the chat. Okay. Let's go ahead and put my paper on top of it and let's go ahead and get started. So, um, Miss Sophia, just let me know like if it's proper or like if everyone can see. If you yeah, can you're see. good. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so I'm gonna kind of scoot it over here because maybe some people's um, chat box or their videos are in the way. Hey, what I want everyone to do, this is what we're gonna start with. We're gonna start at the top, right over here, we're gonna make a diagonal line going down this way. So let me kind of put it down a little bit. We're gonna make a diagonal line going down. So starting from here, we're gonna make a diagonal line going down, just like this. It doesn't have to be straight, just as much as you can. A diagonal line going down. Okay. Next, you are going to make another diagonal line that's parallel to it, which means just right across from it, diagonal down, like this as well. Okay. Once you've made these two lines, you are going to then connect them. But remember, these, this line that we're going to connect them with is not going to be straight. It's going to be a little curved going outside for the sleeves. So it's going to be a little curved, just like this, a bit curved. Okay, so a bit curved. Next, we want the um, sleeve of the shirt to show a little bit because this is kind of like think about it like a suit or a coat on top so we're gonna come right over here at the top of this sleeve I'm gonna start a line going downwards again very very small but notice how it's not connected to the corner it's a bit far from the corner then I'm gonna draw the same thing on this side where my finger is I'm gonna come over here and draw a line from here as well. And then again, just like how we connected for the coat, we're gonna connect it for the sleeve of the shirt right over here. And this time it's gonna be a little bit rounded. It's not going to be straight. So we're just going to round it out like this. There we go. Awesome. Okay, so once you've rounded it out, then we are going to start with the fingers. So right here, we need it to hold. So pretend like you're holding something, like for example, if I'm holding my crayons, my thumb is going to show on top, right? So that's the way that we want to draw this. We're going to come at this corner of this sleeve. So look where my pencil is. At this corner, we're gonna draw a line going outwards like this. Just one line going outwards like this. 
draw a line going out just like this. Next, we are going to make a line that is a little bit curved, just like the sleeves right over here, going down and stopping midway like this. Not too long, not too long. Good job. Okay, let's keep going. Now, this part's tricky because we don't want to draw the ballot just yet. So, we're leaving some space. Right here, I'm going to draw a line going downwards again, like so. And this time, if you notice, this line is a bit curved too, very slightly. It's not a straight curve. It's curved just a little bit. Not, I mean, sorry, not straight. It's a little bit curved. Okay, so this is where our thumb part is going to go. So right here, whenever we draw a finger, you want to dip a little, make a little swoop downwards like this swoop and then you're coming back up ever so slightly make sure they're not lined up with each other you still leave kind of space right over here so that way it's not lined up because if it's lined up then it's not going to look too accurate so you want to make sure that the line is a bit shorter than the one on the left right over here Good job. Now let's add a nail to this. So the nail is going to be a line that goes across, but not all the way. And then another line that goes like this. It's a bit curved. And then connect them on the side. Connect them on the side right here. Might be a skinny thumb, but that's okay. It's a cartoon thumb. Okay, so when we stopped at this for this thumb right over here now we have to create the palm this palm part and the way that we're gonna do that we're gonna come back at this part we're gonna make a little bit of a swoop almost right there stopping right before the sleeve so we're not touching so you leave a good gap maybe like at least your finger point your finger your pinky size worth okay so think about look how what the how big the gap is it's like about my pinky's worth right here, okay? Alrighty, now the last thing that we're gonna do is come back to this bottom corner of this sleeve and we're going to make a swoop going downwards this way. So it's just gonna come swoop like this. And notice it's stopping right beneath the one, the palm part that we made right over here. So you're making a swoop down and you're stopping right above this palm part that we just created. We want to leave a gap for the ballot, the rectangular ballot that we're about to make. Good job. Okay, so now let's keep going. Looking good, everyone. Okay, so now we have to make sure that we have our rectangle. So let's come back over here. What we're gonna do is this line right here, we're going to draw a line that passes, or a horizontal line like this, making sure it touches this empty spot right over here, making a line right there. Same thing, pretend this line is going to extend, but we're not actually going to draw it. It comes, comes, comes right out right here, and then you're drawing another line out like this. So here, if you think about it, this is just one straight line, but we have not drawn in the middle of the fingers because we want it to overlap. Then we want the fingers to overlap the ballot. Okay. Then right here, in order to make it into a square or a rectangle, we're going to make a diagonal line down because it's at a slant. So we're just gonna make a diagonal line going down like this. And then a diagonal line down right here as well. And if you notice right here, it is touching this end of the 
hand. If it's not touching your end of the hand, go ahead and elongate or make the line a little bit longer so that way it touches it. So that way it touches it. And it's okay if you have to erase a little bit, that's okay, because sometimes I have to erase too. So just try your best. Awesome. Okay, so now that you've made that line, go ahead and connect these two lines with a straight line across. You're connecting these lines straight across from right over here. So if you notice where my pencil is, it's just connecting it right here. So I'm gonna make a line going straight across. Just like that. So now if you look at it, it's kind of holding a piece of paper or a ballot. Just a line straight across. And it's okay if it's not straight enough, that is completely okay. Just try your best. Good work, everyone. Okay, let's keep going. So the next thing, we want to make this ballot look 3D, as if it's going into something, as if they're dropping the ballot in a specific type of container or something. This would be the world, okay? So here, at the end of the ballot, let's start with the left-hand side. We're going to go above the corner a little bit and draw a diagonal line going down. Right here. We're gonna draw a diagonal line going down. I'm gonna move my paper up a little bit so you can see. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing on the right-hand side. So right here, start at the corner, but go up a little bit and then draw a diagonal line down. If you notice, we're giving this piece of paper kind of like baby feet right over here. So that's the one that we want to do. Along it just a little bit. Okay. Now these two ends, you want to draw a line all the way across, connecting it to this end right over here. So we're drawing a line all the way across as straight as you can. As straight as you can. All the way across. Good job. All the way across. Okay, next we're going to then make a straight line just downwards at the left hand side right here. Just a straight line down, just like that. And then another straight line down, just like that. Think of it as we're giving it a stand. We're making it have a stand. And then again, we're going to connect these lines all the way across, okay? So go ahead and draw that all the way across, as straight as you can. This is giving it that 3D look, that 3D look. And then if you kind of want to shade it in a little bit, you can. I'm just going to leave it kind of white because I want to color it in with my marker. Okay. Okay. Next thing that we need to add is our world. So I'm going to take my stencil and I want to first show you how big this world is actually going to be. Okay. So I'm going to take my stencil right over here. If uh, you want to free draw your world, meaning your circle, you may. So I'm actually going to take my stencil and I am going to put it above the thumb right over here. So I'm gonna come right here and see how it overlaps this ballot and this thumb. I'm going to then start my circle all the way around. And this is how big I want it to be. Okay, I want it enough so that way this whole ballot can fit into it. So you want to make sure it's big enough. You can make your world bigger as much as it can fit on the page. By all means, do it. Just don't make it too tiny because then it won't show the whole um, ballot and then act it actually going in. So draw your circle wide enough and large enough so that way this part can fit in it, OK? 
okay? So that way this part can fit in it. And it's okay if you have to erase your circle a little bit, that's okay. It doesn't have to be completely perfectly round, that is okay. Okay? And I like how some people are using glass or a bowl or something to kind of draw the circle. It's okay if you don't have anything, okay? You're just drawing the circle to your best of your ability. Great job. Okay, now let's keep going. Now we gotta add the land. So when we add the land, everyone, the land is in different types of shapes. So this is up to you, your creativity. I'm gonna put some land over here and the way that I'm gonna make this is with squiggly lines. So kind of like choppy lines like this going big like this that's one piece of land let's call it north america and then we have another let's say island right over here an island is all surrounded by a body of water and then let's say i have another piece of land that's like right here kind of coming out and then there's like a peninsula right there and let's say i want another kind of land kind of just squiggly lines right here let's give it a land right here you can as, have as many lands as you want because guess what when you color it it's gonna look like the world no matter what okay so far i have my world now you can add as many lands as you can it's just squiggly squiggly lines Good work. Okay, last but not least on this, we want to add the word vote. We want to add the word vote to this and we wanna add it as bubble letters or you could write it as normal letters as you can. But if you would like to challenge yourself and try bubble letters, you can. So the way that we're going to do this, we're gonna write vote, V-O-T-E. Okay, it's gonna be inside of this ballot or this square this rectangle so let's start with the v okay so right here we're going to start with the v okay just draw the letter v okay now for the letter v in order to make it bubble like all you need to do is outline it again here actually let me show you this way you're going to make a mini v inside like this you're gonna make a mini V like this inside and then just connect the line, it's right here. That's how you make a bubble letter V. Let's make the letter O. So we're gonna make O kind of ovalish. And then there's like a mini O inside like this. Mini O inside like this. Next, we're gonna draw the letter T. So the letter T is going to be straight line down and then all the way across, straight line down. And then this time you're just gonna be making two horizontal lines like so. And then you want to make a vertical line going down all the way and they're parallel and then connecting it at the bottom. Last but not least, we have the letter E. So the letter E, just like a normal E, so we're gonna draw a vertical line. Notice the way that I'm writing it, it's, it's, it's kind of slanted, so that's okay. And then I'm going to make one line that's horizontal on the bottom, and then one line that's vertical on the top or sorry, a hor another horizontal line on the top. Okay, now this is where the tricky part comes because now we have to have to make sure that we have the three separate lines right here. So you're gonna come here, you're gonna make a little rectangle right here, but make sure it doesn't connect to this vertical line that you just created, okay? Then you're gonna do the same thing to the top. You're gonna to make a rectangle, but make sure it doesn't connect to this portion. Okay, 
Next, you want to make little tiny vertical lines like this. And then you're going to make another smaller rectangle outward so that way you can connect it together like an E. Okay, dokey, so make sure you've written your vote. All right, now this is where the fun part comes in. You can add as many firework type confetti-like designs that you want, or you don't have to add them at all. But if you want your, your um, drawing to pop a little bit, let's add as much as we can, okay? So the way that we're going to do this, towards the top side, we're going to make them all face the left. And then towards the bottom side, we're going to make them all face towards the right. It kind of gives it that um, layered look, and it also gives it cool dimensions, okay? So right here, we're going to start right here. All I want to do is draw a curved line going down. That's it. Just one line going towards the left. It's kind of like a swoop to the left. Then you want to draw another one. So let's say I want to put one right over here. I want to draw another one. So let's do another one right over here. Again, see how it's going towards the left? Don't worry. They're going to look like fireworks very soon. Okay, keep going. Well, let's do one more. But this one, larger. Do you see how this one's a smaller line? A little bit bigger than that, a little bit bigger, and a little bit bigger than that. So that way, it kind of looks like it's getting larger and larger. I'm going to add one more to the top right over here. Kind of put it down so you guys can see. And then this time, right over here, rather than making another one, I'm actually going to make it go the other way. Even though it's on the top, I kind of want to give it a little bit of a more of a dimension as if the fireworks are like exploding, but they're exploding in different directions. And the two different directions is one to the left and one to the right. So now that I made this one go towards the right, guess what? I'm going to make the bottom ones right here also go to the right. So I'm going to scoot it up again. And then right here, I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to draw just one line going outwards like this. And then another one. And then another one. And then this tiny one right over here. So right now it just looks like lines on your paper, right? But now we got to make them look like a little bit like bubbly, okay? So the way that we're going to do that, let's start back at the first one that you drew right here, okay? So point to the first one that you have, that you drew. Awesome. So now what you're going to do is draw a second one just like it, but this time you're going to point it outwards like this. So that way it's not connecting. So kind, think of it as like a claw, okay? Think of it as like a claw that you just drew or like a sideways V. Then up at the top, just round it out. Just round it out. Let's do, let's do another one, okay? So let's try this, the one on, above it right here. We're gonna draw another point like this. Make sure it's kind of lined up a little bit. And then right up at the top, round it out. Okay, let's do one more together. So then right here, we're going to make a line just like it, just like how we made all these other lines and just connect it to one point. And then guess what? At the top, you round it out. So let's keep going and you can keep watching me as we're doing it together. I'm gonna start at the point right here. I'm gonna start at the point and then draw a line all the way up. As I go up, I move away from the point. I move away from this line and then I round it up at the top. 
round it up at the top. Same thing with this bigger one right here. I'm going to start at the point and then I'm going to keep moving upwards and make sure it doesn't connect at the top yet because I am going to round it up at the top. This is a very, very simple and easy way to draw like fireworks or kind of give it a more of an explosive or celebratory thing kind of design. You could put these anywhere that you want. Anytime you make a drawing, you could put these anywhere that you want. Okay, now let's do the one that's pointing to the right. So it's the same technique that we used for the left side. Now we're doing it to the right side, but this time we start at the point again. So start at the point again, and then swoop it up like that. And then round it at the top. Round it at the top. Okay, and let's go towards the bottom right over here. Again, I'm going to come right down here and then round it at the top. You can add as many as you like. Keep going, make one more and then round it at the top. Last two that we have make another one and then round it at the top. And then this tiny one that we have here and then round it at the top. Okay. Let's add some final touches. So the final touches that I wanna add are some creases in the sleeves right here. So I'm gonna add some kind of shadings right here in the sleeves a little, just like that. So just to give it a little bit of a older look. Thumbs, they need wrinkles. So right here, I'm gonna add some wrinkles to the thumbs. Same with the palms. Give it a little bit of a shade right here because it, there is a shade. If you wanna add shading, if you don't, that's okay. If you wanna add more of the fireworks, then you can up at the top right over here. So for example, if you want to add some like little tiny ones right here, then you can to give it more of an explosive look. Okay, now let me kind of mention something about the coloring. So for those of you that are finishing up the drawing, definitely keep finishing it up. I do want to mention something about the drawing. So the way that I outlined it, everyone, is with a black marker. You may definitely use a Sharpie or a color pencil. But whenever you use a black marker, make sure that you are using like the tip of it and not making sure it's too, too thick. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard for you to kind of see, especially the thinner lines right here. So all you need to do is just go over all the lines that you made with your marker, with your Sharpie that you have or anything that you may want to use to darken your outline. And the only reason I say this is because when you use a darker outline, it gives it more of that pop look rather than a blended look with just colors. So the reason why I'm using black marker, and usually I use black marker for all my drawings, is because I want it to pop more. You're giving everything an outline. So that way, each part that you're going to block off is going to be where you're going to put the color. Again, you don't need your stencil anymore if you had one because you have everything drawn out. You can do this as quickly as you want, or you can take your time with it. I'm going to take my time a little bit. Even with the world, you want to make sure you outline everything because, again, same reason, you want it to pop. You keep making it outlined. Try to follow the line as much as you can. If you mess up, that's okay because you can just erase the pencil line that you have and just accept the new thing that you drew. 
especially for outlining, these are where your final touches are going to go. So go ahead and make those final touches because that way your drawing is going to look complete. And colors are always a good thing, especially for something like this, since it's very bold. That's why I'm using markers. I use markers, especially for drawings like this, because I wanted to make it kind of like a statement and not like very, um, like using just colored pencils and making it very light. So if you notice on the first picture that I showed you, I used markers because I wanted to make the colors look very bright, very bold, very, um, just like it kind of gives it that more like, you know, it's like a forceful thing. If you use color pencils, you can definitely just use color pencils, but it's going to give it a more of a lighter look. And you're going to enjoy this picture a lot more if you use kind of mark if you use some markers because that way you can use any kind of color combination that you want. Oh, I forgot the word vote. So be very careful when you're outlining the word vote because these this is where like the thinner lines were. So you want to be careful not to blend it in otherwise it's just going to look like um dark lines rather than an actual word okay now when you're coloring be very careful with the way that you color so for example like let's say i wanted to color the sleeve right i wanted to color the sleeve with a marker if you have a thicker marker like me like this if you have a thicker marker i'm going to use orange for this sleeve you can use purple pink whatever you want um, I want to use orange, but if you have a thicker marker, always color in one direction, okay? Always color in one direction, because if you start coloring in different directions, it's not going to look neat and clean. So the way that I'm telling you to color in one direction is just make long strokes like this and just color in one direction. So that way, whenever you are filling it in, it looks together and it looks neat and organized. That is one way to achieve a more prominent or a more bold look. So that way all of your colors are put together. So see how all of the lines look the same way? So it kind of looks a little bit more neat. <clears throat> right here, I made the word vote the color red you can make it whatever color you want again same thing you want to practice coloring in the similar direction okay so you keep coloring in the similar direction right here i'm going a little bit quickly but if you ever want to look at my final piece the way that i colored it you may definitely do it just like that one other thing i want to mention is that Right here, you know this 3D color picture that we created right here? Well, I'm going to color this bottom part black. So that way it kind of gives it that shadow effect. And then I colored the other stand part right here brown. And as some of you are asking, what color do you make the hand? I made the hand um, from color pencils because I didn't want it too bold or I didn't want it too dark. Um, and I didn't want it too light. I just didn't want to keep it just this whitish color. So I actually use like a lighter brown shade, which is this. It's called tan. I use the color tan. But if you, since I have a, I have color pencils that are like by 36, you can definitely use color pencils with just brown. There's like a light brown. Or you could use any other color skin that you have, skin color that you have. Another person asked, um, can we use a thin black marker or it has to be thick? No, you can definitely use a thin black marker. It still gives it that pop look because it's a darker, darker shade. So it's good. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys my final piece. So that way you can look at all the colors put together. Just like this. Move it out a little bit so you can see the world. Don't forget to sign your name at the bottom right hand corner. And today's date, September 15th. And if you have any questions, you may definitely put it in the chat. Looks so good, Miss Kinza. Thank you again for another epic, epic art class. Definitely symbolizing what democracy is, which again is 
for the people, by the people, and the use of our colors for the American flag. And like Ms. Kinza said, um, if you choose to use colors for a different flag or different colors, that's 100% up to you. This was an awesome class. Can everyone uh, show us their sketch so far or their drawing so far? Can we, can we see some of your drawings? Just hold them up to the screen and let's see some of the drawings. Oh, wow, I love the colors. Look at that. Oh, I love how someone drew like actual fireworks like stars. That looks really nice. Looks awesome. Great work, you guys. And as always, make sure to uh, send your finished pieces. You can email them over to nationalvrm at gmail.com so we can see what everyone's final pieces are. Um, looks great. Awesome job. Shout out again. Thank you so much, Ms. Kinza, for another epic class. This was wonderful. Um, everyone, we have a bunch of classes coming up, so please be on the lookout from your in your emails for uh, the class list so you can sign up. You should get it from your facilitator. Um, so be sure to sign up for those classes. And remember, your takeaway today is, again, to have that conversation with your families for whoever is able to vote to go out there and do their research and vote. Um, and we hope everyone has an awesome, awesome day, a great week. Have a great day at school this week. Um, and we'll see you in the next class. Thank you. Yali Madad. Yali Madad.